Hi, I'm Margaret Garcia, and this is my studio. I'm here in Los Angeles. I'm sort of a product of the neighborhood, I guess, of the community. I um, have lived here most of my life. I spent three years in Chicago. That's the only time I left. I've been making art for a long time. I've worked uh, in the prisons. I've worked with gang members, and I've worked with the deaf, and I've worked with the gifted, and I've been teaching at Plaza de la Raza. I went through self-help graphics. I just feel that art was the one thing that I felt I was capable of. I didn't have the attention span or the desire to work in a bank or to work for anybody, to be honest. The thing about being an artist is that if you're an artist, you can somehow find a way of working for yourself and creating and making something that you can sell. But if you have to work for somebody and you have to get up at 6.30, 7 o'clock and you know, get out the door and go to the office and work for somebody else and take directions and do all that. I just never liked working for people. I don't like taking direction. I don't mind if it's something where you're learning, but art gives you the independence of being able to live your own life and look at it from your own perspective. I was working for the Citywide Mural Program and we had, a, we had taken over the old Venice Jail as an office and, one, and, and I was working um, hiring artists to paint murals all over Los Angeles and one day Margaret walked in to, to our office and I just started talking to her and we really hit it off. And, and I ended up like giving her her first mural commission and she did the whale mural that, that I don't know if you've seen pictures of but it's really great mural that's still up uh, Venice Boulevard and Beethoven Street and then she helped me out when um, when I did my freeway mural for the LA Olympics in 1984. I just thought she was a great spirit she you know like I said we connected immediately she she was um she was just starting out as an artist and she you know had a lot of great ideas and 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 she came from obviously a tradition of of murals where she grew up in Boyle Heights and so there was a long tradition of, of mural painting on the streets and I can see that her art will be looked at and and studied for the depth of experiences that she had and the neighborhoods she lived in and the people that she met and um, I think I think that in itself tells a whole story that will live. She's shown a lot of bravery. I've always looked up to her as, um, as somebody who, against all odds and against, I mean, who've, who made huge sacrifices to be an artist. And, um, and I really admire that. I really, really admire that. Today is the oil painting workshops at Plaza de la Raza that I've been doing for a number of years. Uh, this is where I sometimes meet new people and, and get them painting. Um, Bonnie is team teaching with me. Um, Bonnie used to take my workshops a long time ago, but she is now more of a colleague than she's no student. You know, we have some of the same skill sets and what one has Sometimes it's sort of like we play off of each other's skills. When I come in, I look at people and I say, oh, this person needs this. This person needs this. I may be wrong. So that's the thing that I respond to as a painter, as an artist, as a teacher. Because in order to see you fly, to see you make it, I may say, you ought to do this, and Bonnie will come over. No, 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 you ought to let her do that. And I'll go, okay, let's see, let it go. I'm not here to make an artist that works exactly the way I do, that does exactly what I do. We're not looking to make clones of artists. What we're doing is trying to find a way to open up the door to your voice and your likes and your aesthetics. The students come in, some have more skills than others, 
but it doesn't matter because the student actually throws the gauntlet down in some way. They, they say, this is what I want to know. This is what I, I want to learn. And in so doing, you're called upon to teach what you know. And sometimes we think we know something and it's through walking through the process of teaching that you enforce and really learn what it is that you're doing. That's why it's always good to have students. I, I, I love her portrait work. I think she's really taken a strong interest in that. That's not all she's done. I mean, I saw work in there with lighting and composition that just amazed me. Beautiful paintings, real serene, uh, great imagination. Uh, and like I said, the composition of colors and light and dark. Uh, something that I think stands out with Margaret's work in a really fantastic way. I'm just looking forward to, to see more work here in, in the studios I'm visiting um, and grateful that Margaret is so productive. As, as of when I first met her, and we gave an exhibit at, at the Galleria Sin Fronteras. Thank you. We, again, we're grateful to Self Graphics for sponsoring her down. Uh, she was productive then and continues to be very productive to the present. So it's been a real pleasure for me to, to be a fan and, and colleague. I came home from first grade or kindergarten and I brought home my crayon drawing and my dad said, oh, you're an artist. And he made me believe that I could be an artist. I didn't really know what that meant at five or six. Who knows what an artist is when you're five or six. But it, he made me believe that I had the capability and the capacity to learn how to draw and how to paint and how to make beautiful things. My mother, not so much. She, she wasn't like that, you know. She came from Mexico. In her world, the idea of being an artist was a career that was, you know, the starving artist, because we all hear the mythology of that, you know. To be uh, a famous artist, you must be starving, you must be male, you must be a misogynist, you must be crazy, you must rip off your ear. Um, and the idea for her to come to this country and put her children in a position of getting a better education or bettering themselves and becoming something. So she didn't put any value in the idea of being an artist because to her, anybody could be an artist. I originally met Margaret at uh, Avenue 50 when she was, she was talking on a, at an event over there. She has an art education and she knows about the history of art, but she still also loves her heritage, and she does combine those things together. You know, she's sort of one of those people that has survived without a frontline gallery, even though she's shown her work all over the place, she doesn't have a commercial gallery supporting her. So in a way, it's encouraging to see how she's managed to have a career and people know what she does, and be, you know, kind of on that level of artist without feeling obligated or pulled towards, you know, showing at Gagosian or someplace like that. I'm sure she would like to, like, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure. Maybe she would tell him to go jump in a lake, I don't know. You know, the art world in Highland Park is kind of small, so I probably likely crossed paths with her many, many times, and then gradually we sort of got to be really best friends. So. <laughs> We've known each other for a number of years, and um, during that time, I've kind of offered her to design her catalog. Um, she considers me her co-conspirator. That's how she always refers to me. I'm sure that Margaret's kind of art journey has not been easy. It's still pretty male-dominated, etc. I mean, you know all this. Um, but you know, she's really, got her own um, aesthetic. She works all the time and she doesn't let anybody tell her what to do. I don't think she cares about attention. She, she would keep working no matter what. Um, I think that, that the um, attention that she's gotten recently has been really good for her though, like really affirming. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Margaret Garcia. Yeah.
to say here, so um, excuse me if I choke up a little bit. My father was born in Boyle Heights on Pomeroy Street to a mother who came from El Paso. She also was born in the United States. And he was repatriated, deported to Mexico. And my mother, my grandmother, did not find him until he was 15 years old when she brought him here. 40 paces across the street from La Plaza is the Pico House. That is where they beat him up and stripped him and took him of his suit. And I'm here, okay? We're here. The Pico House, the Pico House was owned by the last Afro-Mexicano. He was Mexican and he was black. And the people that founded this city, at least 50% of them had African descent. And this was founded by black and brown people. And we need to claim this history and this heritage. That building has been empty for 30 years. I'm just bringing it to your attention because it ought to be under the purview of La Plaza where they can exhibit the work of our people, of our heritage, and where that needs to be done. I want reparations for my father. That is what I'm here to celebrate. But we're not cartoons. We're people. And our people have professions, they're teachers, they're filmmakers, they're authors, they're choreographers. They're, they run the gamut of all that. We have to stop being a cliche and start looking at the individuality within the people. This is why I have painted portraits for so long. Because I'm tired of being looked at as a cliche. We need to look beyond that. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. And if you don't mind, I'll have another cerveza. Thank you. Thank you to Cheech. Thank you to each and every one of you who are here to see my dream come true. <laughs>